I'm an employee in Applied Behavioral Economics at this beautiful company that turns 20 years old this year. Can we get a round of applause for that? So I just, I'm here to welcome all of the alumni, um, all current employees, all current staff, and all of our associates who are present tonight. Your presence this evening is really, really welcomed. And we really just hope that you have a great time with us. Over the years, we've said hello and we've said goodbye to um, a number of people. A lot of people have gone on to complete MBAs. Some people have gone on to start companies. And one person in particular has gone on to become the president's economic advisor. Can we all give Trudy a very, very warm welcome as our keynote speaker for this evening? I've never seen so many people in this space, um, so it feels interesting, int intimidating. <laughs> now I'm used to crowds, um, seeing a crowd in this context is, is not um, in my experience. So to begin with, of course, I'd love to say congratulations uh, to you, Stefan. Um, I think this is an amazing achievement. 20 years um, is you know, a wonderful time uh, for somebody who started a company. Uh, we, we all know the dire statistics about South African entrepreneurship, but I think once you made it past the 20 year mark, um, you know, you, you're here to stay. <laughs> we don't have to worry about you. It was really um, an amazing experience. I think being in the banking practice in particular and working with clients in the real economy, um, you know, was very different from the parts that many other economists take. Uh, you know, many would go, uh, into government, reserve bank, treasury, competition commission, etc. Many would go into banks. Uh, but very few, at least at that time, were in consulting uh, in that sense, where you're client facing, you're dealing with uh, business problems. And I think that has um, stood me in good stead um, in terms of an appreciation uh, of business in a way that economists uh, don't always have. Um, and also coming from a different perspective uh, than the traditional macroeconomists also gives you uh, a different perspective. I didn't work in competition when I was here, but I was exposed to it, and it was also quite a natural um, and a seamless entry uh, into the competition commission when, when I eventually uh, went there. So I feel like as an economic advisor uh, to the president, Genesis is an important part uh, of my story. It sets me apart, um, I think, from other economists. Um, it also, you know, embeds me in a community um, of um, Genesis um, alumni. I'm not sure if it's the most active <laughs> alumni network, but you always know it's there. Uh, you know, you, you have the informal networks uh, at the very least. Um, so, so that has been wonderful. So it's good to see everyone here. It's good to see that Genesis still plays that role um, in nurturing young economists, new economists. Uh, but I suppose it's also at a stage where you know, um, there are multiple entry points and different um, career paths uh, and, and different parts uh, of people's careers. I bump into Genesis work, you know, all the time. Um, last year, just after I had a baby, <laughs> I was uh, the lead writer for the high-level panel uh, led by President Mutlante, uh, which was a very consuming process. But one of the studies that was cited in the land reform part was a, a Genesis audit of land claims. And I, I just couldn't imagine, fathom, um, that this is the kind of work that Genesis does. So it's, it's quite interesting to see it in completely in areas that had not been um, an area of focus when I was here. Um, so it, you know, it really speaks to the growth uh, and the development of the firm. So once again, congratulations. Um, I hope you have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Trudy. Um, and I think it's always sad to see such talent leave Genesis, but it's heartwarming, I think, to know that people go on to better and greater things. I've been asked to talk about founding principles, um, and I thought if I put that to a vote, probably Friday chicken would come up top. <laughs> but um, I can vouch that it wasn't there all the time since the beginning. Um, but I suppose there has been a few things that have guided um, Genesis from the start and under Stefan's leadership and that I think 
maybe define us as a, as a company um, and as a group of economists and others now. So the first one, I was asking Richard, in fact, earlier, and he said, economics, that's it. <laughs> I remember having a fight with Richard five years ago when he wanted the name economics out of our, our um, letterhead because he felt that limited us too much. But, but I think economics is what defines it, um, or a defining feature. And I know we're not all economists. Um, yeah, there's a dog, straight dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think the second, for me, is maybe the rigor, the passion, and the problem solving, and probably all of those together. I think you can get clever people. We hire clever people. Um, they're well trained. They have insights. But it's how you use that. And that's what I think is another distinguishing feature for me, that it's been a privilege to work with people, with people that have such passion to solve the problems before them. Um, it's evidence-based. We don't just accept the conventional wisdom. We check, because um, too often things and debates in public are led by conventional wisdom. Labor laws are ruining employment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this will undermine foreign investment. But it's a fact-based inquiry that really is what sets us apart, but then the passion and the problem solving. So, and often that passion problem solving is not driven by commercial. It's in fact driven by just the desire to assist, solve a client's problem, whether that client is in fact a pro bono work, a small client or a big client. One of, I think, the, the big award-winning cases we've done on the auto parts, I remind the commissioner that they had abandoned that project attacking sort of aftermarkets and spare parts and the pricing. And for a mere 100,000 Rand, we reunited that entire um, case, moved it forward, and now it's going to be a flagship program coming out of the Competition Commission. We weren't rewarded, but we drove it, and that's what drove us. So I think for me, that passion is, is important. It's, and again, I'm going to go back to Marx just to annoy everyone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Marx's concern was about wage slavery, and it wasn't the salaries you get paid, um, which I know you may think is slavery, but, <laughs> but it was about the lack of fulfillment and creativity in, in work. And, um, and I think for me, I find it hard to associate with that because I feel within Genesis at least it is rewarding, um, solving those problems. <coughs> Maybe the third, those who know me will probably predict, ethics, independence, integrity would be the third one I would put up. I think, you know, whilst we all point to government at the moment, I think the most astounding thing is how our own profession and other professionals have been so unethical um, across the board. And, and that, for me, has stood out, um, that, that in any sort of corruption, there's complicit um, partners, and the, our profession is one. And I think it highlights another issue for me about, and which I've started to assume well, maybe realize about a bit about independence. Um, within the consulting commercial world, there's also um, a lack of independence from business sometimes, that one takes on the view of business. They're your clients. That's a natural sort of association. And it's not the corruption that we've seen with the Baines and McKinsey's, but it can be equally destructive because it, it pushes a particular perspective forward. So in my thinking about independence, what has set us apart is has been the public-private. And I think by going public-private, working for trade unions, NGOs, gives you a perspective from a different point of view. And that's important. And I think that aids our independence because when you come at it as an advisor to government, you're seeing things in quite a different manner than you might if you're only coming at it from the corporate side. Um, and that is a key differentiator, if you ask me. Um, so I think, what I've enjoyed over the years is exactly doing that range of projects for a range of clients that has just given you insights. I mean, interestingly, I picked up a very famous economist book recently, Jean Tirole, who wrote about economics for the common good, and I'd recommend getting it. But in the introduction, he poses a question for economists. He says, you know, people come at problems and see problems in, from their perspective of where they already are. If you really want to think about kind of economic world or world you want to live in, think about it before you're born. 
think about it before you know if you're rich and poor, if you're black and white, male, female, South African, or US. And I think that's a good way of starting to approach some of the problems that one doesn't come from a preconceived um, position and, and actually look uh, from different angles. And if we can keep that. So for me, those would be three foundations. They have relation to the values and, and everything we do. But I think it's on those three that, that the impact and projects and success that ultimately have come from. Um, because we have passionate people applying the queen of the social sciences tools um, in an ethical manner. And, and that's why we get to solutions that have impact. I think that's why we built up trust in the community. And so I suppose for myself, if, if Genesis can be held up as, as what we'd expect from an advisory firm, if we can be held up the leadership by the staff that this is what we expect. And also if, if the alumni take some of that away, we may lose your skills, your talents, but if you take some of that and infiltrate in other um, spheres, then I think we've achieved something quite, quite good in 20 years. And if not, we've still got Friday's chicken. Thank you so much, James. A uh, very inspiring uh, presentation and drawing on some great names in the profession. I've been asked to talk about Genesis in Africa, and I think this used to say something about unlocking value in Africa, but uh, maybe not tonight. Um, and uh, our role as a firm that operates across the African continent is something that I think has, has defined us from, from the very start. So I guess my life in, in the rest of Africa started when I was in matric, but most importantly, when I was posted to the Ugandan government in 1992. And at the time, uh, most of you won't remember because you weren't born, but uh, in, before 1994, South Africans were not allowed to travel to many African countries. So I could only work in Uganda because I had a British passport. And when people ask me where I came from, I used to say I came from the Isle of Wight which is a small island in the south of England. But it was also quite descriptive of where I actually came from, the South Africa. Uh, but that, that experience uh, enabled us to, when I, I joined Genesis and before that, Sanabank, to, to really hit the ground running as a company that had people who were not just grounded in South Africa, but had a deep understanding of conditions in the rest of Africa and who could do work and add value to clients across the continent. So from the very start of, uh, of Genesis, from I think 2000 onwards, we have been very actively involved in assisting companies and working with clients across the continent. The world has also changed profoundly across the continent. In 1998, the number of phones per person in Uganda was one per 100, literally one per 100. Now, it's 120 lines per 100 people. It's that dramatic transition. So as a firm, we have been advising a lot of clients in understanding how this economy is changing and how, to some extent, this, this digital world is now evolving. And certainly, we're going to be unveiling in the next uh, year a whole lot of focuses around youth and digitization across the continent. How we can make sure that these two things become assets as opposed to liabilities um, for, for the continent. Looking forward, we have now achieved some very significant milestones. We have a deeply entrenched, well-established and growing office in Kenya. We have, I think, 12 people in that office. And this has, again, transformed the amount of business we can win in that market. And we hope to repeat this success in other markets. I'd also like to um, just remind everyone that Africa is our home. It's not a dangerous place. Uh, we have had people traveling in and out of the countries in the rest of Africa for the last 20 years. It is our home. It is something that's made a real distinct, it's a distinctive aspect of our, our company and of our culture. And we look forward uh, to another uh, 10 or 20 years in this continent where we continue to grow and expand. So thank you very much. It's important to know where we've been, but it's even more important to know where we're going. And if we look at our current staff complement, each of us is about an average age, we're halfway to retirement, which means that Genesis has already been hit by the impending youth wave. But to tell us more, here's E4D's resident young person, Kahiso Zwane. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that Africa's population is set to explode in the next coming years and is set to grow by over 1 billion people. 
most of this growth will be in the age groups of 15 and 24. So where many have chosen to see a crisis, we at Genesis choose to see an opportunity. The youth wave is a tipping point for Africa, which if harnessed strategically, can change Africa's trajectory and indeed the world's. But to do so, we need to get a few things right. We need quality maternal and child care in the first 1,000 days, quality basic and tertiary education, and the skills to enable Africa's young people to become productive and empowered citizens that can influence the future. In seeing this opportunity, Genesis has committed itself over the next 20 years to looking forward and placing a priority on youth. In doing so, we will use our skills, at least hope to use our skills, to support the creation of innovative technologies, dynamic and inclusive market systems, and just and equitable policy and regulatory frameworks that will enable Africa's young people to take a leading role in the determination of the world's future. I thank you. So far you've heard about our journey, but our journey had to start somewhere. And now I want to call on the person who knows this company like no other. Some would say that he knows it better than the back of the breakfast menu at Four Notes. <laughs> but before I let him have his say, I think it's turn that we say thank you. Thank you for having an idea. Thank you for making that idea a reality. And thank you for unlocking that. I just want to say that I'm really touched uh, to see all of you uh, and to see so many. And I think I'm speaking not only for myself, but also for James and also for Richard, as the, the three of us having been a Genesis, if not from the start, in a calendar sense, but I think from the start in a, in a spiritual and a, a sense of purpose sense. Um, so on behalf of all three of us, thank you very much to all of you for being here. And Judy, thank you for coming back. Thank you. It's been a while. Um, and I think I should say this to you. Um, we here in this building, we're so excited um, and proud uh, when you took your, your new job. Um, and it's an inspiration for, for the people who knew you, you when you were here. But it's also been an inspiration and continues to be an inspiration for all of the people that you heard speak. And as you can hear, this is a young company. It's a, our average age is 29, actually. Um, and it's really in our young cohort that, that the future, not only of this company lies, but also of the work that we do. And I think the role that you play in their lives is something that you may not be aware of, but it's, uh, it's real and it's, um, it's evident, certainly, in, uh, in, in how they receive the news of of what you are doing now and what you're doing for us now. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank the alumni. Um, and I want to thank our current team. And I, I want to thank you for coming. Not just for coming tonight, but for coming to Genesis. And what you did by coming was that you made it. You changed it. And what I hope for the alumni is that in some small way, some small and happy way, we changed you. And what I hope for uh, the team who's with us now is that in some small way, we change in each other. I, I want to say something about how we started. We really just started with two people, one person, then two people. And what we, what we had was we had a tool and we had a belief. The tool, to your point, James, was economics. And the belief was that we could use economics to get people to make better decisions. And those could be very powerful people, very wealthy organizations, politicians, ministers, leaders, but it could also be the powerless, who can also, through their decisions, change many things. And I think what the work that was presented here this evening speaks for itself much more eloquently than I can. Uh, that I think, at times, in the last 20 years, we have succeeded at that. The firm has changed from an economics only firm to a firm that has economics at its roots but understands that the world is a complicated place. Too complicated for economics to understand a lot of the time. So that's a big deal for us is that we've become a multidisciplinary firm. And I think it's probably the biggest thing that's happened to us in the last, let's say, 10 years uh, is, that, is that change. 
in the world, though, in which we work, um, this world in which we have worked and worked so happily and so successfully, that world is about to be upended. It's about to be upended because of Cafiso's point that he made about the youth wave, the demographic change that is, is happening now and will continue to happen for another 15 to 25 years in the region. Admittedly less so in South Africa, but big time, big time in the region. It will be the most important event of our lives, there is no doubt. And our world will be upended because of technology. Our world will be upended because of climate change. Three great forces that will influence the areas in which we work, the things we want to get done, will be the interplay of demography, of the youth wave, of digitization, and of climate change. And our job here in Genesis is to make sense of all of that, and to get done what we want to get done um, uh, with, with a clear knowledge and deep capabilities in those areas in addition to the areas that we service now. But the key thing is to understand is that those three forces, massive as they are, will not determine our future. We will determine our future. What we do with them will determine our future. And what they do basically is they create massive space for agency, massive space for countries, for communities, for companies like ourselves to do extraordinary things. And that's really what we are going to be spending our time doing. And in order to do that, we ourselves will need to change. And the one area that I just want to highlight this evening of how we change is how we work. So, you know, when we started off, there was nothing that made us prouder than being able to explain the world to people. We were curious. James was curious. Richard was curious. Trudy was curious. People who worked for Genesis then had high curiosity and they loved understanding and explaining things to others. And so that was good enough for us. We could crystallize what the world looks like in the best possible way, and we thought that was enough. And so, you know, that's what today in Genesis, for the people who work here now, we refer to as the research and insight work stream that we have. It was about crystallizing the world. Over time, we realized that actually, we do really want to help people make better decisions. So we became more analytical, less descriptive. We became more focused on what people needed to decide and how to decide that best. And in Genesis now, we have a work stream that we call decision drivers. And probably about half of our work in Genesis and more of it in really key parts of Genesis like evaluation are decision driver types of work. Where we are now is that if we want to achieve what we want to, what we have set out to do in the world with these three forces, is we are going to have to do something that we've started, but that's essentially new for us. And that is we will have to design solutions. And so if you remember, one phrase from at least what I'm saying tonight is solution design. As a firm, we are going to shift significant effort, significant focus to solution design. And what does that mean? That means actually things we already started to do. Uh, things such as um, designing new strategies, designing new laws, designing new institutions, designing new business models, designing new market structures. If we can do that, then we are not just designing solutions. We are designing the future, the future of the region in which we work. And in order to do that, that means that we will have to do our work somewhat differently. We are already, in Genesis, I think, within the company, really succeeding at breaking down the walls inside the company that stop us from working together. We, we love projects. We prefer projects where a behavioral scientist can work with a financial analyst, can work with a microeconomist, can work with a financial expert, can work with a health expert. Th those are the kind of teams we are putting together now, and we will put, to put together more and more of them, and we will do everything we need to do to break down walls within Genesis. But we are also breaking down walls between Genesis and the outside world. We've become much more porous. We have become much more open. We've become less pleased with ourselves. 
we've become uh, much more partnership driven uh, and we have started to work with our clients as partners. And that sounds like such a cliche, but not in the way that we mean it. Because we really mean by that co-pondering problems, co-learning, co-solving. And we do that in, in, with a range of clients now. Gates, um, I've got a list here actually. Gates Agro, which is the large Africa foundation aimed at establishing a green revolution in Africa. Um, uh, various economic ministries in Kenya and South Africa. Uh, various corporates, uh, medical schemes, a whole host of entities we now have that co way of co-working with. And we are also open to the world in the sense that we work a lot more with people that are not of Genesis right now. They are outside. They may be interns, they may be specialists, they may be associates. So our world is changing and the world of Genesis is increasing. So next time we have this, which I hope is next year, we will also have all of those associates with us because they will be part of the Genesis family as much as we are. And then the other thing that's changing is who we are. We, we are becoming more diverse. We are becoming more cosmopolitan. We are becoming more spread out in a geographic sense. We are going to be crossing many more disciplines in how we work and whom we employ. We are going to be linking many more networks. We are going to be including many more points of view and different perspectives, ideologies of the world in the teams that we put together so that we can understand and solve more. And, um, and so these massive changes taking place around us will be in some way reflected by massive changes internally. There's, there's just no doubt, which is why I say that we are just getting started. But there are some things, and this is where I'll end, that will not be changing. So the one thing that will not be changing is that, and the originator of this phrase is here tonight, Timothy Hobden, uh, is that we, when we work, we live in a glass box. And that is Genesis code for saying that if people could see everything that we do, what would they think? And how would we feel? Which goes to the ethics point that James underscored. Also, we believe in building ourselves as, and each other as individuals. The people who work here, the people with whom we work in client, the people with whom we work in partnerships. That building of each other as individuals, Siakana is the, our, our, our short phrase for that, will continue to be a key part of how we work. And thirdly, the other element that will stay the same, that will stay the same, is our phrase, it's an internal phrase of plus ultra. What plus ultra really means is that we do our work with rigor, with imagination, with courage. And all three of those will be called upon. But that's what will continue to be of the genesis that has been. So many things will change, but many things will stay the same. Again, I just want to say thank you to all of you for coming, for pitching up, for spending years of your life with us, for spending your energy, your passion, your intellect, your curiosity, your creativity, and your courage with us. Um, and for those that are doing it today, I just want to say double, double thank you. It's very special. What you, I, there's, a, there's a phrase that was once said by somebody who said, the most sacred thing you can give somebody other than your love is your name. Is your name. And I want to thank all of you for, for what you have given to us as a firm and to each other. And I want to say enjoy the evening.